Good afternoon, everyone. Glad to have you with us today on a Monday afternoon. Uh, today we're going to be talking a lot about COVID because uh, there's a, a fair amount of news today about COVID. Let me begin by um, talking about the numbers here. So uh, in the city of St. Louis yesterday, we had 103 new cases. Now, if you look back over the last three or four days, you'll see that it's ranged anywhere from 73 to 103 cases per day. Uh, and so our case count is going up daily. Uh, one, but the important thing, well, a lot of important things here, is that of the number of people currently hospitalized, that with uh, confirmed COVID cases in the region is 240 individuals. This information's two days old. You, know, you all know that, I think. But it has been as high, within the last couple of weeks, it's been as high as uh, 260, and uh, today down around 240. Of that, 59 people in the region were in the ICU, <clears throat> 28 were on ventilators, and 36 people were admitted uh, two days ago. So. Friday to the hospital. We are running new hospital admissions for a seven day rolling average of about 39 to 40. It's varying a little bit. But that was one of the indicators that we, uh, that we said that we were going to rely on and that we are going to rely on uh, for making some additional changes. Now, you may know that uh, City of St. Louis, we announced just a little while ago that, um, you know, when, when folks make a complaint about a business that they believe is not following either the social distancing and or the face covering mask requirements, our uh, health department follows up on those complaints. The initial follow up is often uh, through a, a telephone call, then a visit. Uh, education to that business and the vast majority of the time those businesses come into compliance once we have a conversation with them and educate them and make sure that they know uh, the things that they're supposed to be doing last week it was last Monday in fact a week ago we issued letters to uh, half a dozen or so businesses that uh, had that were pretty seriously um, not following the guidelines. So then, as some of you know, if you're on social media, we saw over the weekend that some of those businesses um, are continuing not to follow the guidelines. And so today, later on this afternoon, or first thing tomorrow morning, our health department will be issuing letters to a few of those businesses saying that they have to close for two weeks. Um, this is a very serious step that we never wanted to have to take, but we are seeing increases in cases significantly. We are seeing uh, high hospitalization numbers, 40 on, on average, seven day. And we have uh, tried to bring people into compliance. And so at this point, <clears throat> we believe that um, those businesses that are not complying will need to close for two weeks. Back after a little drink of water there. So that is a step that we did not want to have to take, but we feel it is, is necessary. <coughs> and we hope that <coughs> other businesses will get the message and come in line. Uh, so many businesses have been working so hard to follow the guidelines. We are, we, we're trying to avoid shutting down a whole classification of businesses. We don't think that's the fair thing to do. We're just using what I would call more of a surgical approach to this rather than a blanket approach. More water. 
So uh, I hope that all of you understand that. We are not going to announce those businesses today because they have not yet been notified. We think it's fair that those business owners receive notification first. And um, we are really hoping that, the, that all the other businesses that are reluctant to comply will come into compliance. And I want to just end by thanking all those businesses who every single day are working hard to comply with the social distancing requirements, to comply with the mask requirements. I know there are a lot of those businesses out there. <clears throat> we also see them on social media, uh, sometimes putting out a message to their customers, hey, you know, if, if you're sick, if you're symptomatic, if you, you know, don't come, and if you do come, bring your mask, expect to socially distance. Those businesses deserve to be um, commended, really, for doing what's necessary to tamp down the spread of COVID. We have very few levers um, left to use, and I've talked about this before. Mask wearing um, is one, and social distancing is one of those levers. So um, you have seen that um, City of St. Louis is a little different than St. Louis County. <coughs> City of St. Louis, we have a number of large venues we also have a number of large uh, clubs and nightclubs, and that's uh, a little different than St. Louis County, but we want to make sure that those businesses can um, continue to operate as long as they comply with the guidelines. I've got something popped up on the screen. Do, do we have an issue here? Huh. No. We think not. Run later. <clears throat> there you go. Okay. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so uh, we're going to take this surgical approach with the businesses here in St. Louis and, and uh, close those businesses that are not complying and thank those businesses that are continuing to comply. It's about, of course, it's about protecting people's health. It's also um, trying not to put even more people out of work. Uh, we know that uh, today, yesterday I think it was, is when the federal unemployment uh, ended for people. That was the additional $600 that folks who had been laid off because of COVID were being able to get per week. <clears throat> that has now ended. I know that Congress, just today, I've read a few things, that they are now beginning to talk about how they might be able to help people, continue to help people, uh, be able to pay their rent, be able to pay their utilities. Um, but the one thing that, that uh, we don't want to do is put good people out of work uh, when their businesses are complying. So uh, that's really <clears throat> the message today for COVID. And well, let me say just a little bit more here. And I mentioned this on Friday, I think as well. The, we're looking at our case counts uh, daily, of course, but we also have looked back over the past 30 days. So <clears throat> the 30 days from uh, June 28th up to today, what we're seeing is still 64% of the cases that we've received are people under 40 years old. The highest uh, age range here is people in their 20s, they are running at 31% of our total cases. So that nine years, 20 through 29, or maybe that's 10 years, 20 through 29, they're running at 31% of the cases. You would not think that that would be the case, but that's, um, that is, and then people in their, in their 30s are running about 23, 23 and a half percent. Uh, and then <clears throat> you've got people under the age of 20 who are running at about 9% of the total cases, and that's how you get to the 64%. Um, fortunately, I guess I would say it in this way, uh, people in their 60s only account for 6% of the cases, 70s count for 4%, 3.7. So um, it, it does appear that older folks have taken to heart the social distancing, the mask wearing, and keeping your circle small. 
uh, not expanding that circle out to people that have more exposure. But uh, we've got to get we've got to get better uh, compliance in the 20 year the the 20s and the 30s, um, so that because those folks can get it too and they can be uh, asymptomatic some, and they can bring it home or bring it to their workplace and infect. Um, additional folks that may have underlying health conditions or may be older and therefore uh, very uh, much more susceptible to having uh, a, a very adverse outcome with COVID. So <clears throat> that's it for COVID today. I bet we're going to have a lot of questions about that. Uh, I do want to mention one other thing before we go to questions and that is that, uh, you know, it was a violent weekend in St. Louis, uh, seven people were killed, 23 were injured. Uh, uh, this is across the region. Uh, four of our officers were uh, fired upon by an individual who fortunately they were able to take into custody. One officer was hit uh, with a uh, shotgun, shot buck in the, in the elbow, in the arm, and uh, but others were also hurt when the car rammed their car, their vehicle. And so we are uh, appreciative of the work that our police do. They were at that time uh, trying to address uh, uh, a gathering and an incident at a, a, a gas station quick shop that was here near downtown, just a little bit north of downtown 13th Street and they were trying to address that when they were fired upon. And uh, so just appreciative of the work that our police officers do for us every day uh, and uh, wishing them a really speedy and a full recovery. Uh, but I think it's, it's uh, worth, worth mentioning that, you know, this, the, the gun violence in our city, our, our city's under a lot of stress, stress and uh, that plays out in many different ways. One of the ways it plays out is more disputes, more personal disputes, more gunfire. And as you all know, we are seeing that in every major city across the U.S. And it's, it's so tragic for uh, the, the, fam the individuals, for the families, for the friends of those individuals, because it doesn't just affect one person, it affects a whole group. So um, thank you to those officers. <clears throat> so Jacob, do we have questions? Quite a few questions, okay. Mayor, as you might expect. Sure. So uh, Stephen is watching, and Stephen has a wedding in 19 days. And like mm -hmm. St. Louis County announced today, 25% capacity limits. He's curious what the capacity limits are going to be or are uh, in the city of St. Louis. So Stephen, one, congratulations on your wedding in 19 days. I don't know if your wedding's in the city of St. Louis, Didn't say. hopefully, uh, we 19 days is a long time away. I hope that we don't have to put um, strict capacity guidelines in place. We still, I'm sure, will have social distancing and have masks in place. We are recommending <clears throat> that personal social gatherings. So what is that? It's maybe a barbecue in your backyard, it's uh, a birthday party, it's uh, meeting up with people in the park, uh, those personal social gatherings, we are really recommending that you keep those as small as possible, 10 or fewer, um, so that you can keep your, your circle as small as possible. Uh, if we can turn the corner on this COVID, we won't have to put more restrictions in place but that really is completely dependent on, on our behavior. So even at your wedding, I don't know how large your wedding is. Hopefully it's a small wedding, family, close friends, uh, maybe outdoors. We know that uh, being outdoors is, is uh, better than, than being indoors. In fact, we are recommending, this is off your subject a little bit, but we are recommending that if you have uh, if, if you want to go out to a restaurant to get a bite to eat, um, try to try to sit outdoors if you possibly can, 
it's just a little bit safer. Even outdoors, you need to socially distance. So <clears throat> it is hard to say what, what the requirements will be in, that's almost three weeks away. So you must be getting married on what, Saturday the, maybe the 15th, something like that? Whatever 19 days is. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking it's, uh, so, uh, almost three weeks. So congrats on that and um, everybody socially distance and wear a mask. Uh, question from Nicholas, uh, is another stay at home order out of the question? Nicholas, it's not out of the question, but we certainly are trying to do everything we can to avoid it. Um, but it isn't out of the question. Uh, question from Lindy, what are contra contact tracers learning? Are they finding cases in bars and restaurants or retail stores? Who's the biggest culprit? You know, uh, Dr. Eccles, uh, we were going to have Dr. Eccles uh, on with us today, but he's, he's tied up doing something else. And what he would tell you is that this is full community spread. Yes, we are seeing uh, cases in bars and restaurants, but people are out and about so much that it's very hard to actually recall every place you've been in the last week and everyone you've been around in the last week. And so um, we know that there's a lot of exposure happening in the, the bar situation where you have lots of people, nobody's socially distanced and nobody's wearing a mask. So we know that that is the case. <clears throat> there's also, of course, community spread at the office if people aren't wearing their mask. But you know, we always wear masks here in the office. And I take mine off to do this just so that you can understand what I'm saying better. Uh, but we are all wearing masks here. So the, the data tells us that it, that's, you can get it anywhere. Are there any other measures the city's considering similar to how St. Louis County imposed a 10 p.m. curfew on bars and restaurants? So <clears throat> our, the, the way we have approached this is to uh, issue uh, an order for those bars that are really uh, ignoring the, the social distancing and the mask wearing for them to close and we're trying to do this so that we don't have to go towards a blanket approach um, because we believe there are so many bars and restaurants who are doing a good job and so to put a uh, sort of a, a curfew if you will on them um, is I think a little bit extreme at least for the city of St. Louis at this time. Now we are looking at <coughs> whether or not places should stay open really late. You know, uh, St. Louis has a 3 a.m. liquor license possibility, and we have about 90 locations, uh, bars, restaurants, who have uh, a 3 a.m. license. And, you know, one of the things that we are looking at is, well, should we pull back on that or not? There has not been a decision made about that, but we are seriously considering that. Um, you know, there's an old saying, and it's old, but um, there's some truth to it. Nothing good happens after midnight. Uh, I, I know that I know that there's fun to be had after midnight, but uh, in the middle of a pandemic, we really have to have to uh, curtail that. People may want to steer clear of the businesses who were attempting to shut down. So Tanner's question is. When and will the city release the names of businesses that have been forced to close? We will release their names. We're just not going to do it until they've all received notifications. What is a way, uh, in light of the news today, Mayor, what is a way that people and or members of the public can let the city know about various COVID-19 violations? Yes, uh, the public. In fact, we, we get a lot of information from the public. The best thing to do, and can we just post this on the thread? Um, there's a link <coughs> that where you can um, report information that you have seen. You can also call it in to 622-4800. That's 314-622-4800. And through that, that's the Citizen Service Bureau. You can upload pictures and you can upload videos um, if you go online and, and do it in that way. So, I mean, that's frankly our, uh, our health department inspectors are 
use those complaints in order to uh, call and visit businesses and instruct them and, and try to get them into compliance. Kevin and Shelly <coughs> have questions about masks. Mary, you tell people to wear, wear the dang mask and they worry it's not working. How can the city be more aggressive and will they consider fines about wearing the mask? We might consider fines. Um, very difficult though, if you think about how that would actually work out. Um, we're, we're really, our, our businesses have unfortunately borne the brunt of some of this in terms of not having people come in without wearing a mask uh, because they're, they're indoors and you're walking through their front door. So we might consider, um, consider some kind of a fine. We, we're hoping not to do that. Um, <clears throat> we, we just need, we need for people to comply. I see when I'm out and about, the vast majority of people are wearing masks now. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they're not, you know, they've got a, a chin strap on instead of a, a, their full mask. But I think most people are, are doing pretty well with it. But what we are seeing is that there are locations where people are not wearing masks. And that, so we're taking a surgical approach to this. We got a question about schools, Mayor. Michelle's question is, how is the city <coughs> help schools or is helping schools mm -hmm with technology, socioeconomic disparities, and the digital divide uh, among students and families who uh, are facing the difficult decision about going back in the fall. Yes, so we're working um, daily with the schools. We have issued uh, guidelines for the schools for reopening. Those were issued a couple of, maybe three weeks ago, two to three weeks ago now. I think everybody is continuing to think about uh, whether or not in-person school should open. It's a very complex issue um, because of course some in-class learning is, uh, is preferable if it can be done safely for both the students, the teachers, and the staff at the schools. And so small groups are required. <coughs> um, some, some schools are offering either in in person class and, or uh, virtual learning. Some schools, um, not St. Louis Public Schools, there was a misunderstanding about that on Friday, uh, but some schools in our region are offering a hybrid method. Uh, other schools are offering just, uh, just virtual. So all of these school superintendents are struggling with this question. And you know, it goes to, <coughs> Does the family have uh, internet service at home? Do they have fast enough internet service? Does the child have uh, an iPad or a Chromebook or uh, you know a, a device that they can use? Do they have the skills to be able to get that internet to work with that device and get online? That requires a lot of our school employees. Um, <clears throat> and so we are working to help them with that but they are the folks that are on the front line with, with kids and with families um, because they, they know who those families and those kids are. So, you know, here we are on the 27th of July. Some schools are starting in uh, three weeks, some schools starting in about a month. And um, so all of them, I think, are, as we look at these numbers going up, are really trying to, to make the best decision for the kids. Two clarifying <coughs> questions. Uh, Alyssa asked about uh, weddings and big events like that. Are mm -hmm. there technically new rules on gatherings or are people being advised to stick to the under 10 rule? So that's a little confusing. Personal social gatherings is you're being advised to keep as small as possible. <coughs> right now there is not uh, if you're having a wedding, so say you're having the wedding in the church, there's not a limit, there's not a 10 person limit on that today. There is still the limit that you must be six feet apart. That means every other pew. That means two people on the end of this pew, one person on the end of this pew. That means the layout and the seating has to be um, 
really distanced. So <clears throat> it's not a percentage requirement. What it is is a, uh, a social distancing requirement. And that will, by its very definition, mean that you'll have a lot fewer people in that venue. Kayla's question is, are there currently <coughs> capacity limits on businesses, or does the 75% just apply to our larger venues and special events? The 75% applies to large venues. Uh, the capacity limits on businesses have to do with what you can do and be socially distant. Um, I think that's all for questions today, Mary. That's all? Good. Thank Good you all. <coughs> um, appreciate all of you uh, tuning in today. Appreciate the hard work that you're all doing, uh, or 99.9% .9 of you are doing to wear face covering and to maintain social distance. Uh, keep your groups small, keep your social gatherings small and with people that are in your, your very close circle. Um, and let's drive these numbers down again. Um, and, and let's try to do it without having to uh, shut down even more businesses. So thank you.